Right, in this update I'm getting ahead of the game a little bit and I'm getting this triple gauge panel here from MX5 parts installed into the dash of the car. Now yes, it is chrome. I hate it as well. But check this out, it was £15 more for a black one. Chrome is going to have to do. It's a budget build. Gotta live with it. Ugh. Okay, so as I plan to supercharge this car, I'm going to need some gauges. And the essential ones being an AFR gauge, which I've already got, the AEM Series X. And I'm also going to need a boost gauge, which I haven't currently got, but I will be getting. I guess these two would be the bare minimum I could get away with. But as I've got space for another one, I'm probably going to fit an oil pressure gauge as well. And as long as these gauges are 52mm, they'll all fit nicely into this panel. Now that's fine but where am I going to fit this panel because right now there's no room for it in the dash so here's the plan. I'm going to remove the big old double din 6CD changer and I'm going to replace it with a single din stereo unit which I actually have spare. It's the one I removed from the truck last year to fit a Bluetooth hands-free one for work so that's kicking about. It's nothing fancy but it's there, it's free, I may as well put it to good use. And then once I've used that single DIN stereo, that should give me enough space to get the gauge panel mounted and then eventually get the gauges installed as well. Okay, so first job obviously is to remove this beast of a stereo unit here. And it is a bit of a pain in the backside. And how do I know this? Well, because I've already done it once. And that was basically to check what kind of wires were back there to see if I needed to buy an adapter harness, which I did this one right here and the attentive of you may also notice that this piece of trim is missing here uh, and that's basically because I almost broke it the first time I removed it and knowing that I'd be doing this job all over again I just chose not to reinstall it. Now some people do manage to get this stereo out without having to remove this piece of trim here. I tried and tried to do it that way and it just was not having it. So as you'll see this process is slightly longer as it involves removing the entire center console here but that was the only way I could get this stereo out and as you'll see it's not actually that difficult so let's get to it. Right so the center console is held in place by five screws. There's two in this rear cubby box here, they're at the bottom there, they're easy to get to. There's two at the front of the center console here and here. There's a couple of um, covers you need to pop off to unscrew those but they're easy to get to. The fifth and final one is not so easy because it's hidden underneath these electric window switches so they need to be prized up and out of the center console so you can get access to that one. Then finally uh, you can unscrew the gear knob and this whole center console should lift out of place. And there we go, we now have access to the final screw. Out of there, gear knob. Magic tree, optional extra. And to lift the centre console out, it needs sliding up and forwards, making sure that it clears the release levers for the boot and the filler cap. Oh, there's an annoying little clip for the switch harness here as well. You need to get a pair of long nose pliers in there to get that out. There we go. Right, she should be out. There she goes. That was the clip I was talking about. Right, so that is the center console out of the way. The next thing you will need to remove is of course this piece of trim here. Now this is held in place by four clips and two screws down here. So what I would suggest doing is undoing these two screws here and then levering the piece of trim outwards from the bottom, not the other way around like I did and nearly break one of these little clips here. Right, so next up to be removed are these two little pieces of trim down the side of the radio here. They should just pull off. One, two, 
like that. Now, the advantage of removing this piece of trim around the radio I found was that it enables you to get a screwdriver behind the lip of the stereo here and get some leverage behind it. And that, coupled with the step I'm about to show you, should get this radio out of the dash. Right, okay, here we go. I've got two Allen keys here. These are about two millimeters, and I'm gonna push those into the two holes in the center of the unit, right by this auto button here. So push one in there, like that. Now the trick here is to simultaneously push away from the stereo with these two Allen keys, so in that direction, and at the same time, use your screwdriver to lever the stereo out of the dash. So push away, lever, boom. There we go, it's just popped out a little bit, that's all we need. Now we can repeat this process on the other side. Push the Allen keys away from the unit and lever it out. There we go. Remove all the gear, and now that it's free, the whole unit should just pull outwards of the dash. Look at the size of that thing. Right now we need to unplug the aerial, like that, and the socket as well. Oh, I see you. and she's out. Now with this massive gaping hole I've got left in the dash, I have plenty of room to install my new stereo and the gauge panel. Now I couldn't decide which way around I wanted them, whether I wanted the radio on the bottom or the panel on the bottom. I think what I've settled on is stereo in the middle above the heater controls and then the gauge panel on top of that. So first up, I need to get the stereo in. Uh, and as I mentioned, I had to buy a harness adapter for that. So this needs to go in first. Hopefully it fits, because it is cheap eBay stuff. Well, it's plugged in. Like that. Right now, with that in place, I should have room for this tasty gauge panel. And I think this just pushes into place. Right, so apart from the chrome, I'm pretty happy with that. It looks pretty tidy, and I'm sorry to disappoint you at this point, I'm not going to be fitting any gauges. This was just in preparation uh, to make space for the gauges when it comes round to fitting them. So there you go, gauge panels installed. Now I guess I've just got to put everything back together, which shouldn't take me too long. So first up to install is this piece of trim. Don't forget the plugs for the lights and the cigarette lighter. screws great so next up will be the center console again it's these levers back here for the filler cap and the boot that cause the most problems you've got to make sure you get those tucked through the hole first like that you may have just done it and now drop everything back into place gear knob Right, that's all secured back down there now. Uh, don't forget the magic tree, of course, that is the most important part of this interior. Is it magic tree? Little trees. Did I make magic tree up, or is it? Has it always been little trees? Am I losing my mind? Yes. You know what? I'm actually pretty pleased with that. I thought I was gonna absolutely hate that chrome. I mean, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. And that whole setup there looks 
pretty factory. Not bad. I'm going to call this a success. So that's about a wrap for another episode on the MX-5. Now with that gauge panel fitted, that will allow me to fit three 52 millimeter gauges when the time comes. And the time is not yet, unfortunately, but it is a step in the right direction. A step, of course, in the direction of getting this car supercharged. In fact, speaking of which, let's do a budget recap because this episode has been pretty cheap, actually. Uh, I don't think there'll be another one this cheap. So the three gauge panel chrome that was £4.95 from MX-5 parts and the harness adapter was £3.19. The stereo that I've put in there as I mentioned was an old stereo I pulled out the pickup so that didn't cost me anything. So total for this episode was £8.14. You're not going to get much better than that and that makes the running total by my calculations anyway £425.13. Um, don't forget I'll be doing a full episodic guide on how to supercharge an MX-5 and the costs involved with that so if you like the sound of it don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date and if you like the video give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot and I'll see you for the next update.